Yes. And uh, in the communist jail was a little bit different. It was concrete cave, three by three feet. 30 feet deep on the ground. On the bottom, three inches water. And we have a heavy winter. If you then visit Chicago during the winter, you know what it is. I found here in your area, in New England, you don't have heavy winter. Not too much. And there is no lights in this cave. No sunshine. They don't let me get out six months. They feed me just with bread and water. Many days they don't give it to me, let him die. This was their purpose, to keep me there. And every day they sent me soldiers and officers to beat me up to sign this paper. And after six months, they was in trouble. I'm still alive. It, they have no idea what to do with me. The head of the army came to this military base, the first general. They took me to the office. We had conversation around four hours. Finally, he says, we cannot keep you here anymore. Because every day, the soldiers come to you down to your place, and you talk to them about your gut. <laughs> and all of them start to love you so much. There is no one left who want to come and beat you up anymore. In this, in this military base was over 1,200 soldiers and officers. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it's a strong weapon changing the mind and the thoughts of the people and bring them to the obedience of Christ. Even they was attend the communist army, they disobey their commanders, they obey Jesus Christ. Glory. <laughs> the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's you remember what Jesus say when Satan come yes, after he fast forty days in the desert and he go through the test. Even he was God. His flesh shall be tested. What he told to the Satan, it's written. There is a power in the gospel. Many times we are so, we are so familiar with the Bibles. With the Bible. There is Bibles everywhere. In our homes, oh, wasn't like that in my country. My father had a Bible. Nobody else in the church. Right. He kept the Bible at home in secret. And he took the Bible and read it. He memorized. When we come together together in the church, he don't read from the Bible. He just told. What he read it yesterday, today, during the night. That's all. The communist police came, confiscated the Bibles, burned them. We cannot find another. But we are so familiar with the Bible. That's a word of God, of course. So what? There is a power to change the people. That's what we are called to do. And the, office, the general says, there is some, another problem. There is another problem. All these people, 
all these soldiers and officers are interested to learn more about Jesus Christ. We don't want to have church in the military base. I say, sir, let me go home. He says, no. You've been in public job 15 years. During the communism, it wasn't necessary to take me to the court and have jury to judge me, suit me, and make decision. The person on the top position, he'll make his own decision, that's it. I was scared to be 15 years in prison, public jail. And I tried to change his mind. I say, sir, I don't believe it's a good idea. <laughs> there is many prisoners, criminals, murderers. They need Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with them. Soon we will see the same problem. I don't believe you'll be happy to see church in the public jail. <laughs> he got mad. And he says, no, this coming night you'll be executed. He ordered my execution. During the night, they decided to do this during the night on the top of the mountain. One officer will take me there. He will finish the work, leave the body. Nobody will find what happened. And the animal is going to destroy the flesh. He drove me with his car to the mountain, to the top of the mountain. He took me out from the car. My legs and my arms was in chain. He put and pressed his pistol on my head and said, I'm ready to murder you. But you have a few minutes for your last prayer. This was his mistake. He want to enjoy seeing me to cry during the prayer. But he don't understand the prayer is a strong weapon. Yes. That's another strong weapon. But we change the prayer. Sorry about that. The prayer is a dialogue between us and Jesus. We change the, the, the prayer. We turn the prayer to be a monologue. We just talk. And we don't stop to listen. And something else. We turn the prayer to be a begging time. We begging Jesus, do this, do this, do this. We make him our servant. He's not. He make us to be his servant. We don't listen. Why we don't listen? Let me go in this direction a little bit. What is the reason? There is few. We are so busy. We have no time to listen. We talk, talk, talk and we go. There is another reason. We don't listen because we don't like the answers. Most of the times the answer is no. And I told you I still have a problem with that. <laughs> because my will is hurt when he says no. And I say, Jesus, what kind of prayer are I supposed to pray now? In difficult times, there is no long time for prayer. Now it's time to pray and build a relationship. 